Right, we're getting ready now to fit the chain wheel and the uh, front sprocket and the primary chain to the engine. But we need to align the primary chain or to check it's aligned and then add, we can add spacers. Just hang on. <coughs> here's, the, uh, here's the front engine sprocket and then we can add spacers behind the sprocket as necessary. So that's all well and good. The problem is, is working out where the alignment is. By that I mean I've temporarily just loosely uh, screwed the chain wheel onto the clutch. And then, of course, the clutch isn't screwed to the housing. It's loose on those splines. So this is the amount of play you've got on the chain wheel. Okay. The chain wheel then sits in the, the outer primary chain case goes on here. And at some point, the outer chain case will push on to this bearing and hold everything firm. The point, the problem that we don't know is where on this axis that is going to be. And obviously we need to know so that we can line, line the primary chain. It could be as far out as here. It could be right in there. So it's about sort of 40, 50, probably more than that thou difference. So we have to try and work out exactly where this is going to be when the outer casing is on. And then we can work out any spaces we need to put on the engine sprocket to align the whole chain. Of course, as soon as we put the outer cover on, then we can't get to the chain, so we can't see. Uh, we can't get to the chain wheel, so we can't see. So we have to go through a process of measurements and so on to try and work out exactly where this chain wheel is going to be when the outer cover's on so that we can align the front sprocket, and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to try and work out where this chain wheel is in relation to the primary chain case. So I'm going to fit, loosely fit, the chain wheel shock absorber assembly into the back of the outer primary chain case. We've got the um, sort of bearing face there, we've got the thrust washer in place. So that I now know that is where the chain wheel is going to sit and if I can work out what that is in relation to the engine then we can work out the straightness of the primary chain. Now I have already done it and I'm going to go on. I have already videoed how to do it but thinking back I don't think I've done it very clearly so I'm going to like reenact it using the old or explain it a bit using the old sprockets. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and align these two sprockets, but it's difficult because we don't know where this one is going to fit. So what we do is we sit this one, although obviously the center's missing because it's on the bike now, we put that one in the casing. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the this inner primary chain case edge that's our datum okay that's what we're going to measure to and from and then if we get things lined up with that then we think everything's in line so that's our datum point so what we do is put the completed um shovels all unit rest it in the case so then I'm going to basically measure from the outside of the sprocket through to that datum point, which is the inner chain case. So how do I do that? So first of all, I measure the width of the actual um, sprocket. So from there to there, that gives me one measurement, the actual width of the teeth, which obviously on mine is bigger than the real one because it's three rows of teeth. But... I'm going to take that measurement then I'm going to take a measurement up to the edge of this chain case the outer chain case so I put a straight edge across then I'm going to measure the distance between this edge of the teeth 
to underside of the straight edge, in this case a ruler. Then I'm going to add the thickness of any gasket, which is 20 thou in our case, and that should then tell me the distance between the outside of the sprocket or yeah the outside of the sprocket through to that edge is the width of the teeth plus however low they are below the casing plus the width of the gasket and that should tell me how far away this outer edge is from the inner casing for the engine sprocket it's a bit different because that's obviously already in the you can put that on the crankshaft and so you need to then measure the distance between the outside of the teeth to this edge and in order to do that then all we'll do is we put a straight edge i can't do it now because i've already put the chain on but we put a straight edge underneath the sprocket measure from the outer edge of the sprocket through to the straight edge and then add the thickness of the straight edge and that will give us the exact distance from the outer edge of the sprocket to there to the uh, inside edge of the inner primary chain case so we should now have both measurements both referring to the distance the the outer wheels to that edge and it's that that is our measurement that's our datum and then any difference in those measurements it can be changed by adding or subtracting um, spaces from behind this engine sprocket. Okay, uh, hopefully that, that makes a bit of sense. And I'm now going to go on and show it. It's just that the, when I did it for real, as it were, I don't think I explained it very well. It was all a bit of a rush. So I'm just trying to explain the logic behind it so that when you see all the measurements, it makes sense. So I'm going to get my feeler gauges and I've actually done this before so I know uh, I've measured the gap already and I'm going to put that there and measure that gap between the chain wheel and my flat edge in this case a ruler as far as I can and that is pretty spot on there and that is 55 thou so that's my first measurement from the edge of the chain wheel to the outer edge using the flat it's 55 thou uh, i'm then going to measure the actual thickness of the gasket which i've already done and i know that that is 20 thou because obviously that's going to add to any any measurement we need to take into account the thickness of the gasket so that's 20 thou so i've got 55 thou and 20 thou so far then i actually need to measure the actual width of the sprocket itself the teeth of the sprocket so yeah let's have a look yeah and that gives me 10 18 near as I can yeah yeah I'm taking an average and I'm getting 10 18 yeah okay so I add those uh, I'm going to add those together and what do I get I get one inch uh, 18 thou right those are all the measurements put together so then I need to measure the engine sprocket and see where that is in relation um, to the engine right so I've put the engine sprocket on and I'm going to put the ruler behind it the straight edge and then I'm going to measure the distance again from the end of the sprocket to oops, my straight uh, the outer if I can do it properly the outer edge of my straight edge Yeah, and I get 101, 101 thou. Okay, I then, so that's 101 thou. And then finally, I 
I mean, that's one inch and sorry, one inch and ten thou. The uh, engine sprocket, the engine sprocket measures one inch and ten thou. That measurement I just took. So now I need to add the measurement of the actual straight edge, which in my case is eighty-five thou. Okay, and then add those together. So those, all those measurements should tell me where the chain wheels are in relation uh, to each other and to the to the engine. And I've added, so the chain wheel, I've got the first measurement was 55 thou to the teeth. The gasket was 20 thou. And the width of the teeth is one inch and 18. So that gave me one inch 98 thou. Then the sprocket measurement between the sprocket and my straight edge was one inch and 10 thou. And then the actual thickness of the straight edge was 85 thou. Add them together, that's one inch and 95 thou. So they're actually within three thou of each other. So that means that the primary chain is virtually perfectly aligned and there's no spaces needed to be put behind the engine sprocket. Okay. Um, and that's but that's one there's various ways of doing it there is actually a special triumph tool for doing it and some people have old cases that they've actually cut away so that you can put the case on and then because it's a cutaway case you can get in and do all the measurements with a case in situ like a dummy case so everything's all right we don't need any spaces we can go ahead and put the primary chain on to the uh, the crankshaft and the clutch shaft. 